So that angle was building up until one day on the uh, Lismore estate, which is a, a privately owned estate, but it's, it's populated by working class people, a lot of people in the glass factory, etc. And it was uh, a lot of, about a dozen women surrounded the van there when they, when they started to go out the road. Uh, that, ex that, that soon went to 20 people. Uh, they decided to re retreat out of it, and uh, they had to go out onto the main road, so they had to go, they should have went back the way, they had to go out over a path, out over a grass verge, and out onto the road. But an ex-class uh, worker who was uh, confined to a wheelchair chair insisted uh, on being placed in front of the van, so they couldn't move. So the, uh, the women stayed there, now it was around half three, no, it was around half two in the day, so by the time word got to us in the factory and what have you, it was nearly half three, so people began to leave the job, and people were finishing anyway at four o'clock, and within, with, within a half an hour or so, there was about six, seven hundred people up at that van. Uh, the guards had come and surrounded and what have you. There was four individuals locked in it. That went on until, until uh, 11.30 that night when an agreement had, was brokered with the, uh, the city manager and what have you, that for now, at any rate, he gave an undertaking that there be no more disconnections. When they disconnected um, uh, the, uh, the water, they didn't care what damage they did. Water flowed down the streets, uh, Many, many of the streets in Waterford for up to a month, six weeks on end, it just ran away. Uh, the van vandalism is what it was. But during the, during the period of disconnection, phone, phone calls would come into the glass factory, into the convener's office where Jimmy was the convener at the time, and uh, people would be reconnected that evening. So people were only very, there would have been the exception who would have went more than 24 hours without being uh, reconnected. Now, uh, about 18 months after that, <coughs> they arrived back into Hillview Estate, which again was a, an estate built just later than the one in Lismore Park. Again, people by private uh, estate, people by working class people, in they came to disconnect uh, a guy there. And again, about 200 people gathered around, blocked them in. On this occasion, the guards came in their numbers, about 40, 50 uh, cops, and treated people roughly, and got the van out of there. Um, and they got away. The, uh, the people were so incensed that they marched down to the uh, down to the guard station, what have you, and, and uh, kept a, had a protest outside, and other individuals went in to make uh, complaints, uh, formal complaints, what have you. But I'm just trying to, there, there's a lot of other details, and what have you. But look, it was no different in lots of ways than the campaign that was fought in Dublin. Uh, Dublin Dublin's um, uh, campaign was compressed into a much shorter period, so it was probably more explosive. Over a 14 year period, you can imagine that there was lulls and periods of intense activity. But the one thing that it did achieve is that it stopped water being commodified and privatised. Uh, since then, the, 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 the victory of that campaign in 96 uh, it stopped it. Uh, they're, they're back again, and we know they'll always be coming, be coming back. So. Uh, what's so different today? Today, there is that, that, that period, that intervening period, uh, is certainly 26 or 7 years, whatever it is, uh, things have changed. Uh, the trade union movement that we had back then, even though we were very critical and what have you, was in a healthier state than it is now. We've had over 20 years of partnership, we've had the grain of the trade union movement and its activists and what have you because uh, people didn't see the necessity to come forward, so the, 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 the number of younger people, etc., uh, and, and the networks that were around at that time have very much diminished uh, uh, over, over that period. And uh, it, makes it, more it makes it just more difficult that th those kind of people are not on the ground anymore, and of course, if we look at uh, Haddington Road and Croke Park and what people went through on that, I mean, it's just sowing the seeds of, um, of, of cynicism and disillusionment. Uh, that, that the trade union movement will, will actually fight for what you want. So th that taken out of the equation uh, uh, is certainly uh, different today uh, than, it was, than it was back in those days. Um, the other thing is that we've had a setback on VIN charges, a setback on the property tax, and uh, you can't white whitewash those things there. There's a residue of feeling after the property tax issue uh, that, look, can you beat these people at all? That's... Um, that's what we find that's there. There's also, there's also coupled with an anger that people want to do something and they want to, um, they, 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 they don't want to pay it, but um, they fit, they, 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 there's a sort of a thing that maybe it's inevitable. And I mean, that's been well touched on here today. Um, now I think the, what was decided on in the last session there is more or less uh, some of the things that I, I was going to say. Uh, I think, I hope out of today's uh, conference does come a genuine, all-embracing campaign uh, nationally, 
that it, inv that it, that it does embrace everyone, that, it is be it, that the, the tactical differences that there may be is not a reason that we're going to see a number of different campaigns, that everybody is together, it's broadened out uh, to, uh, in to be inclusive all around so it can be most effective. Uh, I think basically that's all uh, I want to say. Thanks.